Hey, Diane. Yeah, the pandemic helped to define the economic records of both Presidents Biden and Trump. The COVID crisis upended the job market. It ignited inflation and it added trillions to our federal debt. President Joe Biden's recent warning that we are losing control over the United States position in the global economy has sent shockwaves through both political and financial arenas. It's clear that a major shift is coming and we're talking about the kind of change that could shake the whole world. Biden's warning makes us wonder about the future future of the American economy. What's really going on? And most importantly, what does the U.S. need to do to regain its power before it's too late? The New Silk Road Historically, the U.S. dollar has reigned as the world's primary reserve currency, acting as the glue that holds global trade and investment together. But the global economic arena is undergoing some real, tangible shifts, driven by everything from geopolitical tensions to countries trying to assert their financial independence. And China and Japan are leading the charge to fundamentally redefine the landscape of international commerce. This isn't just a minor tweak. We're talking about a profound, game-changing transformation that's going to have some major implications for America's economic influence and its standing on the world stage. Is this the beginning of the end for the US dollar's dominance in the global economy? But before I answer that to you, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, The Rise and Fall of the Dollar. Let me take you back and talk about the historical backdrop of the US dollar's ascent. Following World War II, the US dollar assumed its role as the world's dominant currency. This emergence wasn't merely due to luck, it was underpinned by America's unmatched economic strength and political stability. During this period, the U.S. was not just a player, it was a decided leader on the global stage, wielding immense influence over international economic policies and institutions. Yet, as history often reminds us, what goes up must also face the possibility of coming down. Recent developments suggest that we may be on the precipice of a significant shift in this long-standing paradigm. The signs of erosion in the dollar's supremacy are becoming ever more evident, and a closer examination reveals several critical influences indicators of this decline. Let's talk about central bank reserves. There has been a notable decrease in the percentage of global central bank reserves that are held in US dollars. Countries are recognizing the risks associated with over-reliance on the dollar and are diversifying their reserves. This isn't just a random trend, it reflects a strategic pivot away from traditional dollar dependency and towards a more balanced and resilient financial strategy. Additionally, we cannot overlook the rise of alternative currencies. The Chinese Yuan has emerged as a viable alternative to the dollar in international trade. More and more nations are turning to the UN in an effort to minimize their exposure to US financial systems. This isn't merely a trend restricted to economics. It's a clear statement that countries are seeking to establish their currencies on equal footing with the US dollar. These moves signal a growing sense of independence among nations that are eager to assert their financial sovereignty. Now let's shift our focus to the initiatives coming out of the global south. A number of countries in this region are actively pursuing de-dollarization efforts, aiming to create and promote local currencies for trade and investment. This move to establish local currencies not only diminishes reliance on the dollar, but also encourages regional economic cooperation, fostering a sense of unity and mutual support among neighboring countries. It's like a group of friends banding together, sharing resources and looking out for one another, an increasingly attractive option in an unpredictable global economy. What's fascinating about these shifts is that they reflect a recalibration of power in the financial world. As countries explore alternatives to the dollar, the question of who gets to call the shots in international finance becomes more complex. The dominance of a single currency is being challenged, and that creates an environment ripe for new players to emerge. This isn't just affecting economics, it has geopolitical implications. The virtual currency ping pong game is on, and it's a high stakes match with significant consequences. A currency war. China is making a calculated move to undermine the US dollar through a complex strategy rooted in its geopolitical rivalry with the United States and its quest for economic diversification and financial sovereignty. This multifaceted approach is not just a reaction to current circumstances, it reflects a broader ambition to reshape the global economic landscape. Central to this vision is the establishment of the renminbi as a credible alternative to the dollar, a goal that has significant implications for the future of international finance. 
China has entered into various bilateral trade agreements, allowing for transactions in renminbi instead of the traditional dollar. These agreements are not just facilitators of trade, they act as catalysts for other nations to adopt the renminbi as their currency of choice for trade settlements. This approach is pivotal for China as it lays the groundwork for a broader acceptance of the renminbi in global finance, nurturing a self-reinforcing cycle of growth for the currency. To really get China's strategic objectives, we have to acknowledge the rising tension in its geopolitical rivalry with the US. As China positions itself as a formidable global power, it sees US hegemony as a major stumbling block to its aspirations. Historically, the United States has maintained its global influence through a robust network of alliances and institutions that favor the dollar, effectively shaping a world that operates under its economic umbrella. In response, China is taking decisive steps to create an alternative global order that aligns more closely with its values and interests. One of the most evident manifestations of this ambition can be seen in the Belt and Road Initiative. This ambitious project aims to enhance connectivity and trade across Asia and beyond, intentionally sidestepping traditional Western-dominated financial networks. By establishing alternative routes and trade partnerships, China is not just boosting its domestic market, it's also reshaping the rules of global commerce to better reflect its goals. But there's more to this story. The perception of threat is deeply ingrained in the Chinese leadership's psyche. They interpret U.S. actions, such as forming military alliances in the Indo-Pacific, as direct attempts to contain China's meteoric rise. China's Economic Renaissance the strengthening of the domestic economy is a strategic goal in this broader picture. China is focused on diversifying its economy by bolstering domestic industries and reducing its dependence on foreign technology and investment. This strategy is not merely about reducing risk, it's about laying the groundwork for future growth and self-sufficiency, allowing China to command its economic destiny without being overly influenced by outside forces. Additionally, part of China's overarching strategy tends to include a deliberate reduction of its holdings in US Treasury securities. The implications of such a move are significant, especially considering China is one of the largest foreign holders of US debt. By slowly divesting, China influences the demand for Treasury bonds, which could lead to higher borrowing costs for the US government. It's a strategic pivot away from financing US debt, with China reallocating those funds to other initiatives, including infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative or investments in emerging markets, effectively enhancing its economic clout while minimizing exposure to dollar-denominated assets. Then there's the matter of gold reserves. To insulate itself from potential dollar volatility, China has been actively increasing its gold reserves. This isn't just about acquiring a shiny metal, it's a calculated diversification strategy. Gold is seen as a traditional safe haven asset that can provide financial stability during times of currency fluctuation or economic uncertainty. By accumulating gold and reinforcing its position, China aims to communicate both domestically and internationally that it is serious about diversifying away from the dollar. Moreover, China's involvement in BRICS highlights its commitment to nurturing alternative financial systems. Within the BRICS framework, China has pushed for a greater use of local currencies for trade among member states, thereby reducing reliance on the dollar. It's an initiative that seeks to empower member countries while undermining Western financial dominance. Through forums and discussions, China is exploring models that challenge existing institutions like the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, which have historically prioritized U.S. interests. All these actions collectively serve a dual purpose. They reflect China's intentions to challenge the existing global economic order, while simultaneously securing its own economic future. As nations around the world observe these changes, the implications could extend beyond mere finance. They might reshape the geopolitical landscape for years to come. Now let's talk about what the implications of these strategies are. So what's its impact for the global market? We've already seen a growing trend of countries pivoting towards alternative currencies for trade, and this is no fleeting phenomenon. The rise of the Chinese Yuan is a prime example. Its increasing acceptance in international transactions is not just significant, it could fundamentally shake the pillars that have supported the dollar's reign for decades. If this trend continues, we might soon find ourselves in a world where multiple currencies coexist alongside the dollar. Imagine a multipolar currency system emerging, where 
the Yuan, Euro, and perhaps others vie for attention, each trying to carve out its territory in international finance. What might this look like on the ground? Picture the global trade patterns evolving, adapting away from the traditional dollar-denominated transactions that have defined commerce for years. This shift will not just impact trade, it will change the very fabric of businesses and economies. Nations will need to reassess how they conduct business and manage their foreign exchange reserves, navigating a landscape that is becoming increasingly complex. It's not just about switching currencies, it's about a total rethink of how countries can ensure stability and growth in a diversifying economic environment. Now, let's peel back the layers and talk about how these changes could introduce increased volatility into global currency markets. The transition toward alternative currencies carries the inherent risk of market uncertainty. As nations begin experimenting with different currencies for international transactions, we might witness fluctuations primarily driven by varying confidence levels among investors regarding the stability of these new monetary players. Imagine an investor's psyche. The uncertainty could lead to a frenzy of speculation as traders react to every shift with extreme caution. This speculative behavior could exacerbate currency fluctuations even further, complicating things for policymakers who are committed to maintaining stability within their financial environments. It's a tricky balancing act, and one misstep could send ripples throughout global markets, making the economic landscape even more unpredictable. Furthermore, let's not forget the fragmentation of the global financial system that could emerge as a direct consequence of these strategies. With China pushing for a shift toward local currency, we could see the emergence of competing currency blocks. Think coalitions forming around major economies such as China and Russia. This scenario would not just create divides, it could undermine international cooperation among nations and complicate the intricate web of global trade. Picture this, nations that would previously transact freely might now find themselves caught between competing blocks, each vying for economic loyalty and influence. It could potentially turn into a tug of war over which currency comes out on top. Yet the fragmentation theme doesn't stop there. Traditional multilateral institutions like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, which have long been cornerstones of the global economy, may struggle to adapt to this new reality where multiple currencies duke it out for relevance. If these institutions fail to keep pace, we might witness a significant reduction in their effectiveness in addressing complex global economic challenges. Their ability to offer solutions and foster cooperation could be diminished, leaving a vacuum that could lead to chaos in international financial governance. But China is not the only player in the de-dollarization game. Japan is also making waves in the financial world, from alley to adversary. Historically, Japan has proudly stood as one of the world's largest foreign holders of U.S. Treasury securities, accumulating substantial investments throughout the years. However, recent data paints a stark picture of change. As of March 2024, Japan's holdings were sitting around a whopping $1.87 trillion. Fast forward to May 2024, and that figure has plummeted to approximately $1.128 trillion after significant sell-offs that accounted for nearly $60 billion within just a few months. It's clear that Japan is pulling back from these financial commitments, marking a strategic pivot in its investment landscape amid shifting economic conditions. Looking closer at the specifics, we see a timeline of this notable decline. In March 2024, Japan's holdings were robust, but by April, there was a reduction of about $37.5 billion, followed by an additional decrease of $22 billion in May. This brought the total down to that alarming figure of $1.128 trillion. What's their motivation behind? First and foremost, rising U.S. interest rates are playing a pivotal role in Japan's strategic recalibration. As interest rates rise, the value of existing bonds tends to drop, leading to potential capital losses for those holding U.S. treasuries. With yields on U.S. debt hovering around 5%, Japanese investors face significant unrealized losses if they stick with these assets. A key player in this landscape is the Government Pension Investment Fund, which manages more than $1.5 trillion in assets. This fund is particularly sensitive to interest rate changes as it seeks necessary liquidity to meet domestic needs while navigating risks tied to foreign investments. But that's not all. The state of the US dollar is another critical factor driving Japan's divestiture. Recently, the dollar has weakened against many currencies, impacting the value of dollar-denominated investments when converted back to yen. For Japanese investors, this conversion loss is a real concern. It's about protecting returns. To make matters more concerning, the 
the yen recently hit a 34-year low against the dollar, prompting Japanese authorities to take action in foreign exchange markets. They've started selling off dollar-denominated assets like treasuries in an effort to bolster the yen. The fluctuations in currency value can directly erode the financial returns of investments, prompting Japan to reconsider its dollar dependency. To add yet another layer to this complex scenario, there's the prospect of inflation in the United States. Rising inflationary pressures have raised red flags about the real returns on treasury securities. As inflation rates climb, the purchasing power of the fixed returns from these investments falls, making them much less attractive compared to other investment opportunities that could provide better returns. Japan itself isn't immune to economic challenges. The nation grapples with its own set of issues, including stagnation and an aging population. These internal struggles are fueling a re-evaluation of investment strategy, with a growing emphasis on prioritizing domestic growth over foreign assets. Japan is asking itself if it can revitalize its economy by reallocating resources toward infrastructure and social welfare programs rather than holding fast to U.S. debt, a move that could help stimulate economic cycles at home. So what does this drastic decision mean for the United States? The domino effect of de-dollarization. Let's talk about the clear and concerning upward pressure this divestment places on U.S. interest rates. When a major player like Japan reduces its holdings, it's like opening the floodgates on the market. An influx of treasury securities could lead to an oversupply, which is a fancy way of saying there would be a ton of treasury securities up for grabs all at once. When supply goes up, prices typically go down, and that's not a great recipe for stability. The resulting increased supply can create downward pressure on the prices of these bonds, ultimately leading to higher yields as investors seek to be compensated for the additional risk they might be taking on. But why does that matter? Well, think about it. To attract buyers for this new mountain of treasury bonds, the US government would need to offer higher yields. Those rising yields don't just sit idle, quietly affecting only bond traders. Instead, they translate into higher borrowing costs for the US government. This could escalate national debt service obligations and create a cascade of fiscal challenges. As the government is forced to pay more to borrow money, that cost gets passed down the line and can eventually affect taxpayers, public services, and national programs. And let's not forget about the potential decline in demand for treasury securities from other investors. Japan's actions might not just be isolated, they could signal a broader trend away from dollar-denominated assets altogether. With big players like Japan pulling back, it could shake confidence in the US dollar as a stable reserve currency. Other nations might start to reconsider their own holdings. If Japan doesn't want U.S. debt, should we? This scenario could trigger a domino effect, causing geopolitical tensions to rise and further straining international relationships. As we witness significant changes in demand for treasury securities, we might also experience increased volatility across global financial markets. Investors are not robots, they're human beings, and they react to shifts in perceived risk. If the demand for U.S. debt starts to waver, we could see wild swings in financial markets as traders react to news and trends, trying to stay one step ahead of the curve. This increased volatility could lead to uncertainty not only for investors, but for economic policymakers trying to navigate a rocky financial landscape. Now let's talk about an important trend amplifying the impact of Japan's divestment, de-dollarization. Japan's shift away from US debt isn't just an isolated action. It's indicative of a much larger movement towards reducing reliance on the dollar in global trade and finance. We're starting to see growing rumbles of reduced confidence in the dollar as a safe haven asset, especially amidst rising geopolitical tensions and economic uncertainties around the globe. A clear sign of this de-dollarization trend is the behavior of other nations. As major holders like Japan divest from US Treasury bonds, this may cause other countries to start moving away from the dollar too. They might actively seek out alternative currencies or investments that they perceive as more stable or promising for trade and investment purposes. This shift could open doors to the establishment of local currencies or even even regional trading blocks, which are groups of nations that decide to trade among themselves using their currencies, bypassing the dollar altogether. Market Volatility for decades, the US dollar has held the coveted title of the world's reserve currency, a position that establishes it as the go-to for trade and investment globally. However, more and more countries are opting for alternative currencies. This trend puts the dollar's status at serious risk. Imagine nations deciding they no longer want to rely on the dollar for transactions. This isn't just a small shift, it threatens to upend the established financial order. A world where the dollar is no longer king could lead to unexpected consequences for international trade and 
finance. Alongside this erosion, we're seeing increased volatility in financial markets. As countries move away from dollar-denominated assets, the resulting uncertainty could lead to greater fluctuations in global markets. Investors thrive on predictability. When that goes off the rails, it complicates everything from monetary policy to economic forecasting. Market volatility becomes a new norm, making it harder for decision makers and businesses to plan for the future. The unpredictability can translate into heightened tension among investors and economic officials trying to chart a steady course. Moreover, the fragmentation of financial systems becomes another layer of complexity in this case. We're observing the emergence of competing currency blocks, a fancy way of saying that countries might start banding together around certain currencies rather than sticking with the dollar. This fragmentation threatens the stability and predictability that have characterized international finance since World War II, opening the door to new uncertainties and aligning different countries with different monetary alliances. Imagine a world where transactions become a complex web of currency exchanges instead of the established standard of dollars changing hands. This could lead to complications we haven't even started to think about. To effectively tackle these rising challenges, the U.S. must be proactive with several strategic policy responses. Let me explain. Possible policy changes. The first critical response is strengthening domestic economic fundamentals. What does that mean in practice? For starters, enhancing the attractiveness of the dollar is key. The United States needs to focus on improving economic indicators that boost confidence. Think along the lines of consistent GDP growth, solid employment rates, and effective inflation control. These metrics have to show positive momentum to reassure both domestic and international investors that the dollar remains a stable and viable currency option. But that's just the beginning. Investing in infrastructure is another major priority. Why? Because modern infrastructure lays the groundwork for long-term economic growth. By channeling funds into transportation, technology, and energy sectors, the U.S. can stimulate economic activity and create new job opportunities. This investment doesn't just generate immediate returns, it also reinforces the nation's competitive advantage on the global stage, ensuring that the U.S. isn't just keeping pace but is ahead of the game. Now let's pivot to the importance of promoting stability and predictability, essential components to maintaining investor confidence. Consistent economic policies are crucial here. A commitment to unwavering fiscal and monetary policies can help build trust among investors, clarifying that U.S. assets remain a smart choice for long-term investment. This consistency sends a positive signal that the government is committed to fostering a stable economic environment. Engagement with key economic partners is another piece of the puzzle for the U.S. to effectively manage global financial risks. Strengthening alliances is necessary. The U.S. should cultivate strong relationships with allies like Japan, South Korea, and various European nations, coordinating economic policies to jointly counteract any efforts aimed at undermining dollar dominance. Such collaboration can amplify efforts to preserve the dollar's standing as the primary reserve currency. Pursuing multilateral trade agreements further reinforces these economic ties. When the U.S. embarks on initiatives to enhance partnerships with allied nations, it helps create a united front against de-dollarization trends. These agreements not only enhance trade, but also position the U.S. as an essential player in a collaborative global economy. As we navigate towards a multipolar world, the U.S. must be agile in exploring strategies strategies that maintain its influence amidst shifting power dynamics. One compelling approach lies in promoting democratic values. The U.S. has a unique opportunity to leverage its historical commitment to democracy and human rights, forging alliances with like-minded nations. Such relationships can foster a sense of global unity that reinforces mutual interests. Investing in emerging markets is another strategy that can fortify the U.S. position. Initiatives focused on infrastructure development and technology transfer in these regions can build goodwill while strengthening economic ties. This not only counterbalances China's growing influence, but also ensures that the U.S. is actively participating in the economic growth of rising nations, creating a lasting legacy of collaboration. What are your thoughts on the potential decline of the dollar as the world's reserve currency? Do you believe this trend will continue, or do you think there are factors that could stabilize its position? Let us know in the comment below.